All right, so I've decided I'll break this news. Good news, but uncertain so far. I got from Troy Thompson a set of reel-to-reel -reel tapes of a rather odd format of some rather special stuff. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what those things are. Though pause the video, you can read the labels for most of them right here. Uh, I also got from Dale some of his solo career stuff. That was a bit more of a thing. But let's just say I got to visit Louisville. So, oldest first. Master tape, meaning not multi-track. Lost in His Love, 1983, though they keep thinking possibly 1982. Just stereo. And actually, I'll go with the stereo stuff first. Or, yeah, okay. This one is a bit of a, of a mystery, and I'm really intrigued about it. Because all it says on the side is just Matrix. Matrix. Five songs in April of 1986. I do not know what that is. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this was like a week after that um, big Pottstown show, which ultimately got them signed. I'm not sure. Because I've had my suspicions about their demo um, Studio Junkie for a while. Out of eight tracks, three of them are obviously from Lost in His Love. But the first four very much sound like they were recorded at the same time. And Troy actually told me once... They were recorded in the same studio as Show No Mercy, hence why they sound so similar. I've heard those. I haven't posted them just because the only source I have them from didn't give me permission to. Um, the fifth song, not the fifth song on Studio Junkie, not from Lost in His Love, is Good Rock and Roll, which uh, doesn't really sound like it's recorded on the same in the same sessions. But if it was, this might be the original master stereo master for. Studio Junkie, which would confirm my theory that it was a very different... Well, it actually would go against my theory that there were two sessions, one for the four, for the four that ended up on Show No Mercy and one for Good Rock and Roll. But anyway, these two are both demos from 1989. This one is rather familiar. Probably the cassette tape's not too different. This one's also pretty familiar, except... I have no clue what Angel is. Neither does Troy. Guess we'll find out. A coup de gras, for me at least, is this set. Troy said one of them is Show No Mercy, and the others are He Doesn't Know. I actually figured out, though, from something inside it. Track sheets, it is Show No Mercy. All four reels contain, in, uh, not, uh, they control, con, con, contain two or three songs. All the tracks are there. Fly Away, or not Fly Away, um, where is it? I Can Fly Now is in those sessions, as we knew, more or less. And then there are weird little things like Evil That Men Do. Take one, take two. What? I... Uh, well, anyway, that's nothing really all that special. It's just the multi-tracks for Show No Mercy, <laughs> circa 930, 1986. I don't know if that focused. Um, I'm not freaking out about it right now very much because I freaked out about it for about two straight weeks when I got my hands on these. Also, <laughs> huge thanks to Troy. <laughs> this is literally my favorite album ever, and I'm holding... I am holding Show No Mercy. All of it. Next up. 24-track, two-inch tape. Bride Demo Session from 1995. Most of the tracks on it, it's actually kind of short, most of the tracks on it are stuff that would end up on the Jesus Experience two years later, two-ish years later. You know, tell me, the worm, love you. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I remember that outtake. Find a man. I don't remember that. Yeah, neither does Troy. Or rather, he rem I think he, re he didn't say he didn't remember it, but he said, pretty sure that they never released that at all. There it is. It's right there. Actually, it's not there. It's, uh, it's in here. I'm not freaking out, because I already took two weeks to freak out over this. <laughs> okay, I'm freaking out a little bit. Past that, Dale Thompson, solo stuff. I'm not going to pull it all out, um, but this one is the entirety of Speak into, into the Machine. Oh, wait, hang on a second. No, this isn't. This is um, 
Shoot, what was the second album called? I forgot. Uh, it's his second album. Um, got all the track sheets and everything here. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of info. And something I hadn't seen before, which is on top of the two-inch multi-track, this. Which I'd never seen before, but I think I get what it is, more or less. Automated programs for the multi-track machine to know when to cut tracks out when mixing down to the master reel, the stereo master. Well, that's nifty. I didn't know that was a thing, but it makes sense. Fair enough. Right below that is sessions from May of 93. Just a couple weeks after I was born, in fact. This is Speaking to the Machine. See the familiar track titles there. Uh, Dale said there's probably some extra stuff hanging out because of what a crazy uh, concoction of stuff this album was. I'm looking forward to it because out of all of his stuff, even as experimental as it is, I think this one's my favorite. Last up. Ooh, your horses. Stay up, right? All right. Um, let me think. June 96. What was this? Oh, this is Sessions that turn were uh, eventually became is it summer all of i think this is the entirety of um hang on let me check no it's a it's portions of dale thompson the kentucky cadillac's testimony including things that got kept off of it and we'll put on the next one and Whatever this is. So once again, I'm holding an album. The entire album. Well, most of the album. One thing I found recently... Oh wait, wait, hang on a second. Uh, let's see. Well, I did notice that the dates between this one, Matrix, and April of 86, that's not a lot before the recordings. Hold up a second while I try to throw these back in. The Matrix tape master is dated April of 1986, and then the recordings for Show No Mercy are just in uh, September. So the timeline's always been kind of like started in 83, not true, they started in January of 84, and then in 85, by the end of 85, what is it? It's always like 83 has an album, 84's got an album, 85 has both Silent Madness and Studio Junkie. And then Potsdam Show in 85. No, no, that was 86. And this is in 86. And this is late 86. I keep hearing that the, al that the uh, album Shannon Mercy was really late 86. And my copy... I have a copy of it dated 87 even, though it's probably just a different distributor or something. So I keep thinking maybe the timeline of like Matrix to Bride is a little bit off. I want to make a video breaking all that down and explaining it. One last thing about this, and that's the timeline of what I'm going to do with this. One thing about these tapes is that Ampex 456 type tape is one that all that very consistently needs to be baked. Literally baked in an oven. Um... <laughs> Something about the adhesive between the uh, magnetic strip and the plastic tape it's on, the adhesive inside, in between the two layers gets kind of gummy and gooey, and it can cause a bad read, or it can actually mess up the tape, or even it can ruin a machine if it's really bad. And these are all 456. This one, these I'm pretty sure are also Ampex 456, because there's a thing there, I don't know if the camera's going to show that. 456-272. So I suspect that's also Ampex 456. One thing that they have is this backing of chrome, of like a carbon on them. And uh, let's see here. Whoop. Oh, yep, there it is also on these ones. It's like, well, pretty much sure all of these need to be baked just in case. I read up on it and found that, well, that's just what you do. Low temperature. A lot of people use a dehydrator. The guy I called up. Called up? Nah. I called up a studio um, a couple hours from where I am. I just made started drawing circles, musicians and studios, further and further out from where I live. I eventually found one a couple hours away. And the guy's like, I don't do it. I don't have that machine, uh, but I know someone who does. And he also does baking, which I hadn't even mentioned, so it sounds like they know what they're doing. This machine is what they're talking about. Very unusual. 
what kind of a budget studio thing half an inch wide 16 channels this is two inches wide four times the width for just 24 and that's common this ain't half inch eight channel maybe that's that's the harder one to find when i looked online the only place advertising we have a 16 channel half inch machine was in england I'm not willing to mail these. I drove to Kentucky to get these things. I'm not risking anything. <laughs> but they've got it. His, his dehydrator actually broke down, and he got back and he said, I had just ordered one on Amazon. It'll be there a week from Friday. So a week from today. Or, uh, yeah, a week from today. And I can take him over and he can do his stuff, do his magic. And he can do all of these and all of these, and he doesn't have a two-inch machine. But I found some people with a two-inch machine. A couple of different places. He says we can bake all of them, and you can take these out to where whoever else has got them, and they can rip them. So that's what's coming up uh, sometime. I said that I'm going to be posting the Matrix Live 1980, the Live 1983, probably not from '83 tape, um, for like three years now. Uh, still hasn't happened. I'm very sorry about that, but I can. Um, I just never actually finished cleaning it up. And I gave up cleaning it twice or something already. But these, this is even going to be a bigger endeavor because you don't get a clean mix off of this. You get every individual track for all of these. This stuff you might hear soon. But <laughs> I'm still freaking out. I've been freaking out over this stuff for two weeks, almost a month now, I think, since Troy first reached out to me and said, Hey, you want these? And, uh... I just want to tell people about it because this is really, really cool for me. And I'll always double check it uh, before posting anything like, Troy, Dale, you sure you're, you're okay with me posting this stuff? But eventually I kind of want to have this be probably publicly available because there's some really cool stuff on it, even if it's all multi-tracks and unmixed and whatnot. There's that song that no, that they never put out. Uh, find a man. There's a song that maybe maybe they never put out. Angel. I'd really like to hear that one because that's the demo era from between their hair metal days and their hard rock and southern rock days. Uh, there's a, there's some really cool stuff in that era that a lot of people haven't heard. Like the li the song they only played live once called Anything, which I jokingly said, pardon my language, kicks more ass than a donkey beating convention. It does. I posted it. Bride. Anything. Live. 1990. It slams, and they never demoed it. As far as I know, they never put on an album. I don't know. Um, I also leak a little secret when I talk to Troy. Dale had mentioned the possibility of covering an old song they did only live, you said, back in 89. There were two possibilities of what that could be, one of which I'd posted, and one was posted by my friend Evan Wall unknowingly well not unknowingly but it was it wasn't singled out it's just an unknown song in a live set and one of those two when i met with troy and got uh, got the, Tom, the dale tapes he actually played me uh, an early rough cut they're doing they're working on of the song not a rough cut early mix and i recognize the song i said that's the one that's the one i love that song I said yeah we liked it too we just Never put it out. It didn't really go anywhere or fit what we were doing. But when he brought it back, it was something that we both kind of liked and we wanted to rework it. And so that's coming up, ostensibly, if he, if he uh, whenever that happens, on the Snake's Acoustic album. It's a bonus track. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because it's, it's a mighty fine song. That's what I've got. So uh, thanks for... <laughs> Still freaking out. Thanks for listening to me ramble about this stuff. And, uh, yeah, here's hoping it all goes well. Lord knows what's happened to these things in the last 30 plus years. We'll see how it goes.